many of you are like me on your second or third relationship? Hands? Show of hands? <laughs> well, you might be surprised to know that the average relationship between a man and woman or a significant other is 10 years. And the relationship that you're likely to have with a healthy dog is around 15 years. So it actually lasts longer than your significant human relationships when you choose your next dog, which is why it makes a lot of sense to put almost as much care into the choice of your next dog as it does when you choose a partner. So I am here today to try to help you make a better choice the next puppy that you get. I'm a veterinarian and I've done a PhD on the relationship between people and dogs. I've also been a breeder since 1993 and in that time I've seen a lot of people get it horribly wrong. So uh, there are a few things that you need to do. The, the, the problem is that even though having a dog can bring such a lot of benefit to your life in so many ways, that would be another, a whole other talk of all the things and all the ways that dogs can enhance our lives. Getting it wrong can be really horrible, a horrible experience for you and your dog. If you choose a dog, for example, that has poor health, then you could be up for years of expensive veterinary bills and the misery and suffering of the dog that you have to witness, and that is not a nice thing. If you choose a dog with the wrong behaviour, it doesn't suit your, your personality in your household, then you could be up for years of putting up with a behaviour that you find really difficult to live with. Or, sadly, that dog could end up it could be a life, a life sentence or it could be put down because you just give up, it goes to the pound or you take it to the veterinarian for the green dream euthanasia. So what can you do to choose the right dog next time, get it right? There's three main things. The first one is choose the right breed. The second one is choose the right breeder. And the third one is get your early rearing right. So I'm going to go through those three points for you now. Choosing the right breed. There's a few things you've got to think about with the right breed. The first thing is activity level. Now we know that there are certain breeds of dogs that are working dogs. Working dogs need work. If you have a home that's not going to give that dog work, it's going to invent all sorts of amazing and interesting things to give it work, such as chewing up your articulation, taking the washing off the line, unstuffing your couch. You know what I mean. So don't choose a working dog if you're not going to give it work. And, you know, even every dog needs exercise, so don't think that you don't have to give a dog exercise, but, you know, you, I'm actually talking about real work for a working dog. So um, that's the first thing, activity level. The second thing is the size of the dog. You know, do you want to be able to pick that dog up if it gets into trouble to manhandle that dog into a bath, for example, to have some control? Do you want it to be able to fit on your lap? You know, I know I do. I like to have dogs on my own. So choose a dog that's going to that's going to suit you. Have a size that's going to suit you as an owner. The other thing is its coat. Um, you want a dog. You know, do you want to do a lot of grooming? Um, do you want to be vacuuming up dog hair all over the house and your car all the time? These are important considerations. So you know, there's usually a trade-off with dogs that don't shed, that they actually uh, need some grooming. So you might need grooming and clipping every two months. Um, otherwise, you might be vacuuming the house and the car you know, quite regularly. So it's a trade-off. Um, and the last thing is, so we've got size, we've got the breed. Oh, health, very important. There's a huge difference in the health of different breeds. So when you choose a breed, make sure you choose a healthy one. So don't choose one with a squashed face unless you can't give it any exercise. They cannot keep themselves cool, for example. They, they pant, that's how they keep themselves cool, is by panting. Squash-faced dogs can't pant effectively, so they, they get overheated all the time. Um, so, yeah, choose, choose a breed that's healthy, not one with wonky legs. You know, you wouldn't buy a car with wonky tyres, would you? So why would you get a dog with funny little squishy legs, you know? Choose a nice, healthy dog. Second thing is the breeder. Does the breeder inbreed? 
don't don't get a puppy from a breeder who inbreeds or line breeds. Make sure that she's making sure that both parents are unrelated to each other. Ask to see the papers. Inbred dogs get sick, so don't buy an inbred dog. Make sure she's socialising it, that she's rearing it in the house so it gets used to family life, not down the kennel somewhere. The third thing is rear it right. Puppies have an imprinting period. And your, your, your 8 to 12 weeks that you first get your puppy home is a really important imprinting period. You cannot go back later on and revisit that period if you don't get it right. So you must expose that puppy to everything you want it to be cool about for the rest of its life. Bicycles, people with beards, little children, goat rides in the car, the vet, you know. And at the same time you've got to do that around the fact that it's not even immunised properly yet. It's not fully immunised. So that means lots of visits from people coming to your home, organise a full social calendar of visits and visitors, go visit people with vaccinated dogs or no dogs, make sure kids sit on the floor before they handle the puppies so they can't drop it, take it to puppy preschool, get it out and about. So those are the things that the main things that you should be doing when you choose a dog. Uh, make sure you get it right, it's a very important decision and I wish you and your next canine companion many happy healthy years together. Thank <laughs> you.